We know that DNA is the hereditary material thanks to Hershey and Chase, but now we want to know the structure of DNA. That's a job for Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. Well, mostly Franklin because she was given a scholarship at King's College in London to set up and improve the X-ray crystallography unit. But since Wilkins was already there working to find the DNA structure, he got credit too. X-ray diffraction provides the shape and structure of a molecule to calculate the basic dimensions of the DNA molecule. Basically, X-ray crystallography is taking pictures of crystallized material by shining light through DNA to see the structure. Franklin spent a lot of time observing X-rays, so some think that she died at age 38 from the radiation from the X-rays, although she had ovarian cancer too. You may be thinking, how can you tell anything from this picture? Well, Franklin did, but Watson and Crick figured out more in a few years. From this image, she figured out all the parameters of the helical backbone and that the DNA, arranged in a double helix, has two antiparallel strands because of the X form in the photo. At the same time as Franklin and Wilkins, James Watson and Francis Crick were also trying to solve the structure of DNA. Watson actually went and listened to Franklin's data lecture at King's College, but didn't pay much attention. Their goal was to build a model for DNA. At first, he tried to put the bases on the outside of the DNA, but they obviously have to be on the inside because they are hydrophobic. This six feet 3D model of DNA was built out of metal scraps. It looked like a twisted ladder with sugars and phosphate as the rail and the base pairs as the rungs. It was already known at the time that each nucleotide was made up of a phosphate linked to a deoxyribose sugar and one of four nucleotides. Watson and Crick figured that since the patterns of the x-ray is regular and symmetric, the dimensions of the double helix are consistent and the diameter stays the same. The horizontal spots correspond to the helical turns, and the vertical distance between the spots measure the height of one helical turn, which is 34 angstroms. Because they knew these measurements, they figured out that there are 10 nucleotides per helical turn. Finally, the helix's pitch, which is the degree of rise, is the angle the X makes with the horizontal axis. Watson and Crick started pairing nucleotides based on their hydrogen bonds. They had to match the width of the bond pairs so that the helix would be even and not bulge out. Since A is paired with T and G is paired with C, and A and G are purines with two rings, and T and C are pyrimidines with one ring, the widths match perfectly. Seeing the bond angles and base pairs so close to each other, the two helices have to run in opposite directions, anti-parallel to one another. Francis Crick, James Watson, and Maurice Wilkins were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and or Medicine for their discoveries concerning the molecular structure of nucleic acids and its significance for information transfer in living materials. Even though she acquired all of the data, Rosalind Franklin unfortunately received no credit.